Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Chef United way for another match reaction. The Blades have just gone and scored a very, 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 very late equaliser, which is fantastic to see. You love to see it. Well, everyone except for Astrid's wet. Um, if you don't know who she is, don't Google her. Please don't. Um, she said that if... What were the words? If Sheffield, if they didn't beat Sheffield tonight, she would deactivate her Twitter account, which uh, I'm still waiting to see her deactivate her Twitter account. Anyway, ignore all that. The Blades have come back from not one goal down tonight. Well, we didn't come down from one goal, but we went 1-0 down, came back from it, 2-1 down, came back from it. And that's great to see because normally it's the other way around or it has been recently. So uh, I'm absolutely buzzing tonight, as you can probably see by my face. Very, very happy. Very, very full of cold as well. So apologies for that. Let's start by talking about the team first and foremost, what Chris Wilder put out. Gerbic managed to keep his spot again. We'll talk about Chelsea's second goal in a moment. Uh, but uh, Gerbic managed to keep his spot. Uh, Holgay, uh, Anel and Robinson at the back. I think they all played really, really well yet again. Um, Bogle right wing back, trusty left wing back. That was a, a, a scary proposition, especially after kind of 10, 15 minutes because it was another really, really fast winger going up against Trusty, and he's not blessed with pace, bless him. Um, it felt like another sacker against Trusty uh, tonight with Madua, Madueke. I don't know how you say it. I'm not that bothered. Um, Madueke, I think that's what it is. Um, it was going at Trusty quite a lot. And uh, yeah, I was worried. Worried, worried, worried. Uh, then we had the smallest midfield of all time. Ben Osborne, Oli Arblaster and Gus Harmer. And uh, they did really, really well against the Chelsea midfield. They did. Uh, and then McBurney and Brereton Diaz up front together. I, I assumed that we would go for that. And I also assumed that McAtee would come out for McBurney because at the end of the day, I don't think Wilder wanted to go too over the top with putting so many attacking players on the pitch. And McBurney and Brereton Diaz played really, really well against Fulham. Uh, the Chelsea side... If I'm being honest, the only two players that I really thought were going to cause us problems were going to be Conor Gallagher and obviously Cole Palmer because he's on a he's in a purple patch at the moment. He's a fantastic player. I don't think either of them really did too much tonight, in all honesty. I thought their defence was really, really shaky. I thought um, uh, Jackson up front didn't really do much. I thought Anel had him in his pocket for the most part. Uh, Madueke absolutely annihilated us at, at times. But at the same time, I think we sort of coped with him for a lot of it. Obviously, the second goal was was just seemed really, really easy for him. Uh, but we'll get into that in a second. Obviously, we had McAtee, Archer and Vinny Souza coming off the bench. Um, and they all had a little bit of, of a part to play in us getting that winner. So, uh, us getting that, that goal back, sorry. But that's what happens in football. It's a team game. Uh, it's a squad game as well. Uh, those players on the bench, just because they're on the bench, does not mean that they haven't got a big, big, big part to play. And that's what they did tonight. Uh, I'm a little bit on the light side when it comes to uh, fine details in this game, because normally, as I always say, I come home from the match, um, I watch Sky Sports highlights that are on the website, and they're not up. So unfortunately, I've managed to catch a couple of the goals back on Twitter uh, but we'll go through it. I think we'll mostly go through the goals. There's a few other things that I want to talk about tonight. Uh, but I think overall, the team that Chris Wilder put out was the best possible team that he could have put out. I don't think there was, other than maybe Vinny Souza. Vinny Souza came out. That was a, a big shock. And Ben Osborne going in there. Wilder must have done that for a reason. Um, but I am surprised. I thought he'd have Vinny Souza because Vinny Souza, out of that whole midfield, was the biggest, strongest player, and I thought he could have bullied them tonight. But Wilder must have done it for a reason, and look, we've got a point out of the game. Uh, I think it's one of those games that you go into thinking, we've got a chance. We're playing well, or we're playing as well as what we, we have done this season. Um, we're picking up points. We should have picked up more points. Uh, and Chelsea, yeah, they've just come off the back of that uh, those two really late goals against Man United, but probably says more about Man United's defence than about Chelsea's attack. Um, and I went on a, um, a Chelsea fans 
uh, preview and he said we will give you goals and goals they gave us um i'm not saying that both goals were were all down to chelsea's bad defending but they were suspect at the back it's the worst chelsea team that's ever come to bramall lane in in my lifetime anyway shall we say or at least since the kind of uh, abramovich days uh but um but yeah it was they, they just seemed really un well inexperienced inexperienced they, they just were and as the game got further and further on and us lumping balls into the box and stuff i thought there's a chance and I, and I always thought in this game there's a chance of us causing an upset. And I was saying to Wayne at the side of me um, at the game, I said that you look at Chelsea and you don't look at them and think they're going to absolutely blow us away like Arsenal did, like Villa did. Like, even when they scored, they, they literally scored a minute after I said that. So po possibly the Thiago Silva goal was my fault. Um, but I still knew that we weren't going to get blown away by Chelsea. Uh, even when they went 2-1 up, they didn't look like, they didn't go again and look like they were going to score a third, which a lot of teams have done to us this season. We've been in a game and then they've they've managed to go one goal in front and then they go and blow us away. Not not in the sense of scoring three, four, five, six, but getting another one and but being on top of us and on top of us and suffocating us uh, and us not being able to get out or create anything ourselves. And, and that's been the problem for a lot of it uh, at home this season, just teams coming at us and going at us and going at us, going at us, and we just can't get out. Um, and, and Chelsea didn't do that tonight. They had a lot of the ball, I would say, but I don't think they did a lot with it. Uh, wowzers. Do you know what? Did not realise this. So Chelsea had 68 possession. We had 32. Obviously, that equals 100. They had six attempts three on target. We had 11 attempts, six on target. So we almost had double the goal attempts and we did have double the goal at uh, the, the shots on goal. Yes, we're at home, but we're playing the mighty Chelsea. So uh, I think that just shows that we were in parts, at least the better side. Uh, expected goals, 1.47 for us, 0 0.41 for them. So again, it just shows that we've got the ball into better positions to, to, boost that expected G up. Um, so anyway, let's move into the game. I'll, I'll talk about the goal first for Chelsea, Thiago Silva. I'm not sure who lost their man for this because apparently it was just a little bit of a melee, lots of bodies marking lots of bodies. And then Thiago Silva just comes out of nowhere and just kind of side foot volleys it right into the corner of, of the goal. And the thing was, yes, he's unmarked and that is someone's fault. I, I don't know who it was. Somebody had a go at me for not blaming Jack Robinson for one of the goals because I'm uh, I'm biased about Jack Robinson, apparently, which I do love Jack Robinson, don't get me wrong. Um, but I don't know whose man this was. So whoever it was, they lost him, and it was their fault that, that Thiago Silva had, I wouldn't say an easy, easy tap-in, but um, yeah, he certainly got to divert that into the corner, which he did very, very nicely. And this is the thing in the, in the championship. If your centre-back finds himself on the penalty spot, unmarked, this more often than not doesn't end up in the bottom corner, but it does in the Premier League because we're playing against top, top quality players and even defenders. They find they find the back of the net. Virgil van Dijk, it was almost the same at Bramall Lane where Virgil van Dijk found himself in, in space and, and managed to find the back of the net. Lots and lots of times a season, Polinia against Fulham lost his man all on his own, flicks the header into the corner. We've done it so much and it's frustrating to watch. It really is. Um, but I certainly didn't think Chelsea going 1-0 up was the end of the game. Like I said, if we're talking about Arsenal, if we're talking about Liverpool, if we're talking about Man City, you're thinking it's over, but not against Chelsea. Uh, and this is no disrespect to Chelsea. It's, just, it's not a good Chelsea side. It's a che like I remember Frank Lampard, Balak, um, Drogba coming to Bramall Lane when we were uh, under Warnock and it's like wow these players are world class players there's no one that I was really worried massively about I was thinking if anyone Cole Palmer's the man and like I said earlier he he just didn't do a lot in this game in all honesty he tried to find a few through balls but they didn't quite work out uh, but uh, but yeah we, we we probably managed him really well in this game because coming off the back of he scored 16 goals. I know eight of them 
uh, have been penalties this season for Cole Palmer. But I almost was thinking they're definitely going to get a penalty today and uh, and Cole Palmer's going to slot it in the bottom corner. Um, but no, uh, one all, we come back, 32nd minute. It's not too far. It's, it's 20 minutes after they scored. And uh, it's nice to see us coming back so quickly and, and getting a goal back and, and kind of, you know, getting that, getting that pride, getting that uh, positivity around the players. Because as soon as we scored, we looked a different team. And uh, it was great football uh, up to up to the point of Harmer getting the ball. He waited and waited and waited for Bogle to make the run. He plays an absolutely fantastic ball through uh, behind the back of the left back. I can't remember who it was. Um, but the thing was, um, and Callum West, I need to give him a shout out because he was the one that told me this at half time. Uh, Brereton Diaz in the lead up, that ball from Harmer through to Bogle, Brereton Diaz was offside. So if Bogle puts this across the box to Brereton Diaz for a tap in, he's offside and this goal is not given. However, Bogle hits it at the front post. The keeper has already made his mind up. He's coming out, which. I don't know why, but um, I do know why. Um, but um, it's a strike, and it looks like he's meant it. I was, I said to Callum at half time, I said, um, "Is it a cross or is it a shot?" And actually, looking back on it on Twitter, it looks like he does go for the shot. His head is not looking across; it's looking at the goalkeeper. So I think he's gone for this as a shot. Um, I'm not 100 sure if it's on target. It looked on target, and and Flash goes giving it to him, and they they gave it to him in the ground. Um, and and this could have easily been one of those that's going to miss the post, and it's a goalkeeper's error um, because I think he pushed it in. But no, it's a it's a it's a great bit of play by the boys. And uh, if Jaden Bogle's meant to do that, fair play. And and Jaden Bogle had a wonderful game today. And I think he's been wonderful for a long time, especially going forward and especially trying to get us out of our our kind of defensive third because it, it, it has been a struggle this season. But Jaden always tries to pick up the ball and advance up the pitch and uh, got to give him a big, big, big shout out um, for playing so well in this game. And his defensive qualities have, have certainly got kind of uh, stocks have gone up for him because he's he's been so much better than he's ever been defensively. I still think George is a better defender, but his defensive qualities have gone gone up so much. And I've always been more of a George fan than a Jaden fan. I think Jaden at the moment, it might be recency bias, is <coughs> is just about um the first well the first right wing back on the team sheet, even if both of them are fit for me right now. This might change in the future, who knows? I don't know if George will stay. I don't know if Jaden will stay. But at the moment, Jaden's really tightened up his defensive qualities and uh, he's a lot better going forward, obviously. Um, still want George back. Um, and then we go into half time, and, and we're clapping him off. We're saying, do you know what? You, you've come back from that. You've played really well. Fair play, boys. Keep it up. Keep going into the second half. And um, yeah, I, th- I think we started off the half really well. Um, and, and I'm not going to say it's against the run of play, um, but they scored a goal in the 66th minute. And um, I don't know what it was, but there was two tackles in the lead up, not in the lead up to the actual goal, but between half time and their goal, there was two really bad tackles from two of our players. Ben Brereton Diaz got a little bit annoyed because he'd lost the ball and, and goes in on, I can't remember who it was, um, from behind and catch it's a really nasty tackle and then Jack Robinson in the 58th minute absolutely smashes um, Cole Palmer I think it was and they both got bookings for them and it just made me feel like have we gone a bit raggedy have we gone a little bit like are we losing a foothold in the game and are we, are we resorting to these sorts of fouls to try and get ourselves up or get the fans up for it because I was saying as I was walking away from this game if the players put in this much effort and showed a bit of pride all season, like they have been in the last three, four, five games, we wouldn't be in this mess. The crowd would be much more behind the team because when you're seeing the players just conceding really sloppy goals, not following the men, not doing the, well, it just being schoolboy defending, it just winds you up and it makes you not want to get behind them as much. And it's, that's just how it is. 
Like you're watching it and you're thinking, what are they playing at? But now, as we're watching them, you can see that how much effort they're putting in. And that's all we ask for as Sheffield United fans. So uh, it was great. I still like seeing big, strong tackles when they're wild. Yeah, and, and they miss the ball. It's not what you want to see. And I think Robinson's was a little bit over the top. And, and it, I saw my, my sister's boyfriend messaged and said he could have saw, seen red for that. So I don't know. I didn't see the tackle again. I've only seen it once in the ground. It looked a little bit nasty. Um, I didn't think it looked like a red, but who knows? Uh, and then in the 66th minute, uh, Madueke gets the ball on the right hand side. Uh, he's just. I think Trusty's just not supported well enough here because we needed support. And Osborne did offer a lot of support. The thing was, Nicholas Jackson was playing up front on his own for the majority of the game. It was mostly that the, where they caused us problems was was uh, Palmer and Gallagher and, and Madueke and those advancing and getting forward and, and coming off the knockdowns and... and it just felt like Jack Robinson should have helped Trusty out a little bit more at times in this game. But obviously the game plan was for Ben Osborne to come across and help out. Uh, but at this point, it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. Trusty's being run at. And you know, it's only going to end up one way. <clears throat> it comes inside and it just looks such an easy goal. It looks like, why can't every team just do seven of them in a game? Do you know what I mean? It looks that easy. He's running in from that right inside, cuts onto his left inside and uh, just smashes it past Gerbich. Now, this is where I was saying, let's have a chat about Gerbich, because at the time, it looked like it went kind of in the middle of high, in the middle of the goal. When I was looking where the ball, like, obviously, when someone's going to strike a, a shot, you look for the corner to see if it's ended up in the corner, because that's where a player aims, obviously. It went almost straight at Gerbich, but high. And Ger I've, I've watched it back. I've watched um, it back from one angle. And it looks like Gerbich just falls to the floor and just get almost gets smaller and the ball goes above him. So it's like, just stand up tall and are you not going to save it? I don't know. Maybe I'm being a little bit harsh. It was a good strike. A lot of pace on it. Very venomous. It just looked very central. And that's a, a little bit of a worry for me. Um, I don't remember Gerbich making a save, if I'm honest. And by the looks of the, the shots on target, they had three shots on target and scored two. I think that shows that I didn't have to make too many saves. Anyway, um, the game goes on, the game goes on. Mudrick comes on, which a little bit worried about. Um, James McAtee comes on for Mason Holgate. So that shows that we're actually going for it a little bit more. I was expecting him to take off, I don't know, one of the midfielders or... Brereton Diaz or someone like that for McAtee, but he takes Holgate off, uh, and I think we go to a back five with Ben Osborne going left wing back with Trusty in the middle. Uh, then we then we're going into the eighty seventh minute. Archer comes on for Trusty. That really shows that Wilder's going for it. And do you know what? If they go and win this game three one, at least we've gone for it. And sometimes you kind of just want that. I understand that Wilder can't always just throw every striker on like Warnock used to do. And just go for it because you get picked apart and you just get picked off and they'll score loads of goals, most teams. But I think he, he, he sensed blood. He tasted blood and he could see that Chelsea could just fold at any time. And uh, obviously then um, after Archer coming on for Trusty, Jack Robinson gets injured. And it was on the 89th minute because Oli Arblaster got booked for absolutely scything someone down. And I think that was because Robinson went down. We carried on because we had the ball and it's like, we need a goal. We can't just be putting it out willy-nilly. Um, and then they got the ball back and it's like, well, we can't expect them to put the ball out if we've not ourselves for our own player. So I think that's why Arblaster took him out. And I think Arblaster expected, well, it's late in the game. I've got booked. I might come off uh, if they want to bring another sub on. I'll just take a booking for the team just to make sure that Robinson can get um, the physio on, get the treatment that he needs. And if he needs to go off, go off. And and I'm gutted. I'm really gutted that um, Jack Robinson's got injured. Hopefully it's not as bad as what it seems, but Jack Robinson doesn't stay down for anything. Uh, so yeah, get well soon, Jack. Hopefully he's all right. He went down the tunnel 
and then he came back up after McBurney scored, I think it was. So uh, it was good to see the fact that he wanted to cheer the boys on and he wanted to celebrate, if you if you want to call it a celebration, getting a point when you're bottom of the league, I suppose it has to be, um, with with the boys and, and get the due respect he deserved. Because again, Jack Robinson was fantastic. Anel was fantastic. I've got to say, since Anel's had stick in in sort of the middle of the season and when we're conceding five every week, I think Anel's been fantastic. I really do. So um, big, big props to Anel. No one's going to give Anel any sort of respect. So I feel like I, I feel like he needs, he, he deserves it. So I've got to say it. Um, Vinny Souza comes on at centre back for Jack Robinson. I was looking at the bench and thinking, either Larucci goes centre back or Vinny Souza comes on and, and goes centre back. And I'd have done the same. I'd have brought on Vinny Souza at centre back. Um, if Jack Robinson is injured, I think we've got enough defenders to cope with it <coughs> but um yeah it's not good to see jack robinson injured anyway we go into the 90 plus third minute and um i'm trying to remember how it went i can't remember exactly how it went but the ball goes i think it's um a, gerbich looks like he's gonna knock the ball into the box he lays it short to bogle and i'm like what is he doing why are we why are we doing that what what's that gonna do he might as well just like gerbich hit it into the box but I think it almost like changed the angle of the attack, and he hit a uh, Bogle hit a really flat ball, which made McBurney uh, flick the ball on, which was good to see. It comes out wide for uh, Vinny Souza, and what I loved about this is that he stopped, recycled the ball rather than just hopelessly trying to hook it into the box, because it looked like if he was trying to hook it in, he'd have hooked it into the cot because it was such a difficult ball to to get back in play. So he stops, recycles it, gives it to, to McAtee. I think he gives it to Arblaster, who puts a, a poor ball in it, gets flicked out. Gus Harmer jumps higher than I've ever seen him in his life, wins the header. And then Archer, I'm sorry, no one's going to mention this. Archer deserves all the respect in the world for this because Archer makes this goal happen. The ball is in the area and archer is about this big like archer does shouldn't be winning this ball but he does he rises higher than anyone flicks it on beautifully we've got three players bearing down on goal and now mcatee and ollie mcburney straight through the middle and he fires it into the bottom corner now at this moment in time this is where football and the fa have failed us because i didn't celebrate the goal I felt like I couldn't celebrate the goal because if if the goal wasn't given, I was been devastated and it looked like all three players were offside. And it still looked like all three players were offside until you look right down the line and McBurney is being played on. The other two, both offside. I think it's McAtee and NL. None of neither of them go for it. They let McBurney take it and it's a lovely finish into the bottom corner. Like I think Chelsea's goalkeeper is dreadful, by the way. But McBurney had to finish that. Like, that was his moment, and he finished it with a plum beautifully. If there'd have been a better goalkeeper in the net, they might have done a little bit better. But McBurney finished this off beautifully into the corner, wheels off to celebrate. <coughs> and like I said, I couldn't even celebrate it properly because I thought he was offside. So, um, yeah, it finishes 2-2. However, there is one last attack that could have seen us win this game 3-2. And how hilarious would it have been for us to have won the game uh, 3-2, scoring two late goals against Chelsea, as they've just done to Man United. I think it's either three or four on one. Chelsea have thrown everything forward. They've got one man back. Uh, I think it's James McAtee. Uh, carries the ball. All he needs to do is side foot the ball through to Archer, and I think he gets it caught under his feet. Archer would have been through one on one. It it would have been it would have been three two. I'm sure that Archer would have rounded the keeper or something and finished it off. Uh, but it wasn't to be. He gets it stuck under his feet, and like I said, it was either three on one or four on one, and that would have been it. However, there's one more little bit that I wanted to discuss. We are throwing the ball into the box. We're trying to get a third, even after that, I think it was. And um, one of their players just falls to the ground, 
they didn't look like anyone was around him. I think it was Harmer that they said fouled him, and the referee doesn't give anything at first. He's like, no, it didn't look like one. Takes him about five or six seconds and then gives a foul. Like, what are you doing? It was such a big club biased decision, in my opinion. If we'd have done that, they'd have just carried on, 100%. And um, I don't believe in the corruptness of the, the the Premier League when it's just certain clubs towards the bottom or t- towards the middle. But when it's these big clubs like Chelsea, I think there's something in it. I really do. And that just stunk of a big six bias decision. And I know it's probably nothing, and no one will remember this in a month's time, but... He threw himself to the ground and he got a free kick and that got Chelsea out of jail because we were putting him under all sorts of pressure and it really, really just wound me the F train up, I'll be honest with you. And that's the closest I've ever been on this channel to saying any sort of swear word because I grew up in a house where my parents did not allow me to swear. I do swear in real life, I shouldn't, I do. So I can keep my uh, Fs and Cs to, to myself uh, more often than not. Anyway, uh, another one, <coughs> I think it was Adam last time, uh, that was uh, commenting on the match reaction as it was going, which is always nice to see. Happy for you lot, 2-2 two, two draw against Chelsea. Fantastic performance. Uh, I'm happy you fa- guys finally feel the happiness. That found at the end, uh, the foul at the end was soft. Even Luke, a Palace fan, apparently. He's, uh, he's, he's saying that the foul at the end was soft. Um, even though this team may get relegated, I appreciate their fight. Hope you lot uh, stay up from a Palace fan. That would be very difficult from here, um, but I appreciate it nonetheless. It was a good point against a dangerous team. Whatever the result, we competed really well. It was good to see Brereton Diaz and McBurnie getting 90 minutes and good to see Archer come on as well. Mm-hmm. I, what, I will say this because I've given Ben Brereton Diaz so much credit on this channel in these match reactions, it wasn't his best game today. I think practically everything that he did either didn't come off, he fell over his own feet. It just, he, <clears throat> the only things that he really did well, there was a couple of times where he flicked the ball on intimate Bernie's feet really well. He was backing into his defender and, and, and causing all sorts of problems. That's always nice to see. And a big lad like that who puts himself about, no matter whether... He's missing 50 one-on-ones a game or he can't um, run in a straight line or, or he's or he's got a touch like you know what. If he can back into his defender and cause problems for them, that's always going to bring other players into the game. So, yeah, I, I, I love Ben Brereton Diaz, even when he's not playing as well as what he has been recently. Finally, a match I actually uh, enjoyed watching. The players played with commitment and conviction. Finally, absolutely, Nicholas. Very nice name as well, if I do say so myself. Uh, Great to see that fight back in the team. Well done all. Felt like we were playing Chelsea pensioners at times. All right, okay. Uh, Chris got unbelieving. The Blades are staying up. (laughs) Like the video. Yes, like the video. We've got 250 people in the stream as of right now on YouTube and Facebook and Twitch. So make sure whatever platform you're on, give it a like right now. It really helps the channel out a lot. I didn't even mind if we lost 2-1. That was an exciting game. Uh, The 2-2 result is a bonus. Do you know what I was saying? Against Liverpool, I just wish that we'd not conceded that third. Uh, I think I said this on this channel. um, Because it's nice to go into the last few minutes and we're, we're throwing balls into the box and Almost even if you do lose by one goal, at least you're going for it until the last seconds. And this is how I felt in this game. Like, we were always in it. We're always in it. Even at 1-0, at 2-1, we were always in it. And and if you're going to stay within one goal, there's always a chance of you getting something from the game, which we obviously did. Uh, well played, Blades. Uh, everyone bar the keeper deserves a huge pat on the back for a Sheffield United display, especially after going 2-1 down well played blades right what i want to ask is if anyone has come on this channel and said wilder out in the last few weeks let us know if you've changed your mind i'm not saying that you should or you have just let us know because people do we are all football fans we are all fickle at times so if we got battered five nil week in week out like we did before obviously fans are going to say wilder out 
has the last few games changed how you feel? It's just a question. Let us know in the comments. Um, well done all. Fight, passion, and together this couldn't ask for more. Sorry, I keep coughing. I've got such a bad cold. Um, does Wilder play Gervich out of stubborn pride? He's probably not that much worse than Wes, but clearly not in sync with the expectations of his defenders. Maybe so. And and the thing was, I think the, the players are finally starting to remember to play it back to his right foot. But for a little bit as well, the, the, the thing is, most goalkeepers are right-footed, and the fact that we've had a left-footed goalkeeper for such a long time, it's hard to sort of tra retrain yourself out of that. But, um, yeah, I don't know why I mentioned that. Uh, great to see us finally getting a goal late on. 2-2 against Chelsea is a good result. Well done today, Blades. Absolutely. I saw some Chelsea fans saying that 100% we're going to throw it away and McBurney's going to score, and, and look what happened. I looked through Roy's view from which you always should. Go and look at Roy's view from straight after this because there's going to be a lot of annoyed Chelsea fans and it'll be quite funny. Um, there were a lot of uh, Chelsea fans before the game as well on Roy's view from that were constantly saying, we're going to, I can see us losing this game. I can see there wasn't, I don't think there was one positive Chelsea fan on there or not what I saw anyway. Um, where's the Bogle appreciation? Man of the match, my baller. I did. I gave him that. I gave him that right at the start. If you did, if you didn't see it, go back. But I did, mate. I did. Great team effort. Totally, uh, Portland, Oregon Blade. Thank you very much for being a YouTube member for as long as I can remember as well, because you are a top, top man. Uh, John Richardson, our blaster really looks quality. We need to keep him. Do you know what? I've not even mentioned our blaster. And I think that's just that we're used to him now. We're used to how good he is. And I thought he was fantastic. And He's playing up against Conor Gallagher that the, um, Chelsea fans are saying are their player of the season up until, obviously, Cole Palmer's scored quite a lot recently. Best player for them. Um, also, is coming up against a £100 million player, 110 115 whatever Caicedo was. He's coming up. And, and Enzo as well. Enzo, wasn't he around £100 million as well? So Enzo Fernandez, Caicedo, and uh, the boy Wonder. Um, Conor Gallagher and Oli Arblaster is looking fantastic in that midfield. He's just slotted in there perfectly and he looks a million dollars to me. Uh, I'm not a McBurney fan and I hope he leaves in the summer, but I can't deny he's played well over the last couple of games. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. With McBurney, you just need to keep him fit. That's the thing. If he's fit and playing every week, McBurney. We would never need another striker because McBurney is just so so good, um, and and he and he links the play. He he scores his goals when he when he gets the chance. He scores his goals. I can't remember the last chance, time that McBurney spurned a really good chance. Uh, McSpurney, he's he's not Ollie McSpurney. He's he's really not. He hasn't been for a long time. Uh, it was a really good performance, and dare I say, it should have been all three points. Arbasa, Harma, and Ben Osborne. <laughs> best in a 200 million plus midfield absolutely i didn't i promise i didn't see that comment before i started talking about kai sado and enzo etc uh totally agree yep yep totally agree our boss doing something special for us uh we have our never say die attitude back great to see uh have the lads been watching old bassett era tapes or maybe or maybe wilder tapes you could say uh, oh, you you shouldn't have. You should. I told you not. I told you not to. Um, Gerbich is so bad and actually makes me sad. Okay. Um, he didn't even move for both goals. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not saying I I I agree or disagree. In all honesty, um, I don't feel like I can say that right now because it's still early days for him, and I don't want to throw him under the bus. Uh, but yeah, I'm. Not 100% disagreeing with you. Uh, I had high hopes for Gerbic. Uh, hope he feels un under less pressure in the championship. I think he will. I honestly think he will feel a, le a lot less under pressure and he'll, he'll come up against a lot worse shots and he'll come up against a lot worse players as well and, and they'll have a lot less shots. Uh, on my way back from the game, play so good tonight, lads. Chelsea was... Bad at the back at some moments. I nearly did it then. Jamie nearly made me do it. Uh, Millie Morehouse, that's the Chef United I've been telling my boy all about. Could be one of six for Man of the Match. Love that. 
love that. And yeah, it must be difficult trying to bring up a child as a Sheffield United fan when we're getting battered every week. So uh, it's nice to see that um, your boy is is seeing these little sparks of incredible things that can happen uh, when you're a Sheffield United fan. I don't want to talk any more about Gerbich. I'm not going to put any more up about Gerbich because, uh, yeah, we all know. We all know, don't we? Uh, good result against a strong side. Um, at last, something goes for us. Yay! Great point against those bottlers. Thank you very much, Mutants Yomi. Uh, great result today. McBurney took his goal so well. Definitely did. Big up, Chef United. I put a bet on a draw. You guys have been playing well as of late. We have. We have been playing well, but no one will... will um, no one outside of, of Sheffield will give us any credit. So I appreciate you because I'm, I'm assuming you are. Uh, think while there was uh, late bringing Pele on. Sorry, I mean Sousa. Very good. Very good. I enjoyed that. Please leave a like. Absa flipping lootly. Uh, Cole Palmer, without penalties, is useless. I don't agree with that. I think he's a very good player. Uh, best Wilder performance so far. Is it just me, Nick, or have... You had a guts full. Let me start that again. Is it just me, Nick, or have you had a guts full of this league? Ah, oh, I understand it now. God, it takes me a while sometimes. Sorry, guys. Um, yes, yes, I've had enough of this league, and I only feel like we should come back up when we are absolutely ready and and ready with signing Premier League quality as well. Because it's fine coming back up with a good Championship side you then need to add to it and not just add to it with a couple like we have done in the past. You need to add to it with five to 10 Premier League quality players to even stand a chance because it's so difficult these days. Uh, while the motivating players who mostly don't belong at that level, harsh, but okay. Uh, we need to keep Harmy's quality. Imagine him and our blaster in the championship. Oh, I'm already getting goose pimples about seeing those two in the championship together next season. Uh, good point, Blades. This kind of result kind of makes it sad when we throw points away too right. That's a very good point, Jack. Pressing was excellent and we took our chances. Great spirit, considering that the players have been through this season. Absolutely, John. And, and great to see you, John. I haven't seen you at the match too many times, so uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. Uh, please, uh, sorry, play like we did today, uh, um, today early in the season and we don't fight relegation. I think I've probably read that massively wrong. But I get what you're trying to say. If we played like that all season, we would be in and around survival, possibly survival, maybe even fourth or fifth bottom. Um, our blasts are really making a difference. Let's hope Robinson is okay to right. I'm just going to fly through a few now. Uh, Lee Hopkins, for the first time in a while, I can see a future without McAtee. That's a very, very good point, Lee. It's 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 harsh um, because McAtee's not really had games recently. So when he comes on and he doesn't really pull up too many trees, I don't think he had a great game when he came on. But I, that's not the point. I know that's not the point. I'm just kind of trying to back up McAtee a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it, it's good to see that we don't need him because McAtee was the only outlet uh, until recently. So uh, no, it's good to see. It's good to see. The keeper jumped the wrong way. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, another one, another one. Um, I still still think um, in time Gerbich will be okay. There we go, Robin. That's the last one about Gerbich. Uh, I really like Harmer, even when he's not... Um, even when it's not gone his way this season, he keeps trying. He deserves that assist today, setting up the second uh, and setting up the first as well. He got he got one assist, didn't he? Uh, fetching it back twice is definitely the best way to draw 2-2. Two, two. Good signs that the mental strength might be building. Uh, we've been fragile, uh, too fragile uh, for too long. Eight goals in four games. I'll take that. That's great, isn't it? That really, really is great. What a game. Fully deserves what a performance from our blast, and especially Harmer today. Is it me? <coughs> Sorry, guys. Is it just me, Nick? Or oh, that's that's the exact same comment, isn't it? Just with a few different words. That's weird. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, our blast is the future. He ran that midfield tonight and well deserved that starting role. Build around this kid, especially if we lose Harmer and Souza in the summer. Now, I know Jimmy's going to be going live very soon, so I'll give him the uh. 
the respect and and leave now. So thank you very much, everybody. Really appreciate everyone jumping on and giving showing the love for us. Even if you're not a Sheffield United fan, showing the love. Thank you very much. Hit that like button before you go. Villa fan here. Watch your last three games and being impressed by the character and de determination, I think, is what Wilder has brought back to your club. Thank you very much. Kelly saying, well played. Well, um, uh, keep the spirits up. Absolutely. Smash the like button. Thank you very much. Um, I'm looking forward to Harmer and Arblaster in the championship. Harmer is pure quality. There we go. Thank you very much for watching. Ladies and gents, hit the like button before you go. I'm absolutely buzzing, obviously. And this is a good start to next week at work. And that's what we want, don't we? We want to be in a good mood. We don't want to be devastated after seeing Sheffield United get hammered again. But we didn't. Two all against one of the big six, you must say. Thank you very much for watching, guys. See you next time.